Hey everybody. So, I had a little surprise that showed up yesterday in my incubator. And this is probably the smallest gecko that I've ever hatched out. And I mean, they are small. Like, you've seen my videos with my Neon Day geckos, my Falsuma clamari. These guys are even smaller. They're probably half that size. And I'm talking about the Legodactylus conroy, the Cameroon dwarf gecko. And you should really check these guys out. They are absolutely tiny. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I've got this, it's already kind of half set up here. This is what I use for a nursery enclosure. This is a Marshall Arachnids. It's their purple box. It's an arboreal enclosure and it measures six by six by nine tall. Now, the only changes that I've done to this is I've added some window screen that I've glued on the slits around their on the tops and the two sides. So it gets really good ventilation. The reason that I do this is because small geckos like this will be able to easily squeeze out of the two and a half millimeter holes or slots that are on the enclosure. So window screen that also helps keep the fruit flies in when they do feed. These guys will probably be eating melon gaster fruit flies, so the small ones to start, and then they'll move up to the high days. Let's finish getting this set up and we'll go from there. I like to keep this these enclosures pretty simple, not and nothing bioactive or anything like that, just because with them being babies, I like to be able to monitor them and keep track of them a bit easier. Now they will probably hide in and out of this cork bark that I'm sticking in here with the, the fake plant on it. That way they, you know, they have something to hide and they'll feel a little bit more secure with, with something in there. So we'll just kind of tuck this stuff up a little bit, try to keep it from interfering with the door. And then, And we'll also put some small bamboo pieces in here. And just something like that, something nice and simple. And as far as substrate, because humidity is really important for these young geckos, I use jungle mix. Um, it really holds moisture well, and since they don't typically feed off of it, I don't worry about any sort of impaction or anything. And then the other thing that's in here to help with moisture and to give them a place to hide is the sphagnum moss that's in the, the bottom. Now that we've got that stuff in there, and this is in the evening, so I'm not gonna worry about putting food in there tonight. So they'll get gecko paste tomorrow and some fruit flies. The fun part of trying to move these little guys in there. Now I do have a catch cup right here just in case. Not that I think it'll do much good. All right, so here comes the tricky part. Trying to get this lit up and not let anybody out. Now I also have a bunch of more eggs in this this cup, so I've gotta be careful with that as well. This is like only two out of, I don't know, at least a dozen eggs or more. All right, so my first attempt is gonna be just to kind of open it up and hope that they jump in there, not go the wrong way. Let me know if I'm in your way. side there you go come on all right one down Past. Let him go. It's gonna go in my hand. Might run up my arm. Man, they're so small. Don't you dare go this way. No. There you go. So now that these guys are all set up and in their new home, 
We're going to put them up in the little nursery section of the creature cave. Now it's nothing too special, but it does provide UVB and a temperature gradient, so they can bask. Um, so temperatures here range from about 85 degrees at the top under the light, all the way down to about 73 degrees, which is typically ambient temperature during the day in, in this room. My typical feeding schedule for any of my, my babies or juveniles or hatchlings is going to be feeding them Monday, Wednesday, Friday with Pangea Crested Gecko Diet, usually growth and breeder mixed with one of the fruit paste or the, the fruit varieties. Then usually twice a week, like Monday and Friday or Tuesday and Thursday, I will typically feed them the appropriate sized insects or typically fruit flies that are calcium dusted. Every day they'll usually get a little bit of a mist at night and then again in the morning. So typically right about the time that the lights turn on and the lights turn off. That's just going to be a little bit of a mist on the sphagnum moss and then on the back wall of the enclosure so that they can drink the water droplets off of there. As far as providing daylight for them, I typically, it depends on the time of the year. So summertime, they will actually have a little bit longer daylight time. And usually during the early spring and fall into winter, I will actually shorten the days, but I do that for most all of my enclosures here in the creature cave. For checking the temperature, I always recommend using a digital temp gun. Typically something that's going to look like this. They're available at Home Depot. This is the one I use. It does have um, lasers on it. As far as how long I keep them in these enclosures, like these Cameroon dwarf geckos will probably be ready to, to move on to new homes probably within about three to four months. That's my typical range for most of my day geckos. All right, so that kind of covers it as far as some of my basic care for some of my, my hatchlings. For the day geckos that I have been breeding, this is generally what I do. Uh, there are some slight variations depending on the species as far as how warm or how, you know, how close I put the light. Now, because I am using a T5 HO, um, it's a 5% UVB bulb. Those do put off enough heat to actually provide some basking temperatures. So I don't have to worry about providing a dedicated basking bulb for them, especially in these small enclosures. So like I said, they're going to be about 85 degrees at the top and low 70s in the bottom during the day. And then at night, I, everything turns off and my whole room drops to low 70s. Sometimes, depending on the night, might drop to like 68 to 69 degrees. And then as soon as the lights come back on, it starts to creep back up again into the the mid 70s as far as the overall ambient temperature in here i think that about covers the these cute little guys so if anybody has any questions or anything like that pertaining to what do you do after the eggs hatch um, this is this is pretty much what i do and how i care for them and if you have any questions just drop me a comment below you all have a good night and We'll do an update on these guys here in the future and I'll let you know how they're growing.